Hey guys, Tyro here, bringing you this starter series tutorial on criticals. In Company of Heroes 2, vehicles can experience debuffs or snares. These are referred to in-game as criticals. Criticals are most commonly applied by activatable abilities on units, mines, and finally, commander abilities. They used to also happen randomly when your vehicle would take damage, however these days most of the random criticals are removed from the game. You can get some information on what critical is afflicting your vehicle by hovering over the icon in the unit's portrait. In this video I'm going into more detail on the different types of criticals and how to deal with them. Criticals can be broken into two categories, temporary which you can identify by the icon having a clock and a yellowish colour, and then permanent which do not have the clock and are more red and orange in colour. We're going to start out by looking at the temporary criticals. The first critical we're going to look at is Temporary Engine Damage, also known in-game as Mobility Damaged. The exact effects vary slightly between different abilities, however expect a large decrease in max speed and rotation rate. This can be inflicted by AEC Target Tread, Light Anti-Tank Mines, and M83 Cluster Bombs. This icon is also used for Temporary Immobility, which can be inflicted by AEC Target Tread and the Gamma Bomb. This leaves the vehicle's weapons fully active, However, it renders it unable to move and unable to receive movement commands whilst active. This means you have to give a movement command as soon as the ability is worn off because the original movement command is also cancelled. Next up is Crew Shot, commonly referred to as Stunned. This leaves a vehicle unable to move and attack for 5 seconds. Note that for the Puma Aim Shot and the British Sniper Critical Shot, this will only work on assault guns. For turreted vehicles, they will provide a turret lock instead. There is also a second type of crew shock that shares this icon that allows for a little bit of movement. This is inflicted by Tulip Rockets and the Pack 40 target weak point. Next up is Vision Blocks, commonly referred to as Blind. This reduces sight to zero and disables the main gun for 5 seconds. Here's a quick demonstration. Notice the Pintor is still able to fire whilst you have sight, but the main gun is unable to fire and rotate whilst active. There is a second type of vision damage that shares this icon. However, it is labelled as blind in game. This time, the main gun is able to fire, but the duration is longer. Next up is main gun loader injured, which doubles your reload time for 5 seconds. Note that this is for the anti tank strafe and the close air support commander, not the loiter ability. And finally, we have turret traversal jammed. This stops the turret from rotating, however, the gun can still shoot directly in front of its current position. Temporary crits can be removed by repairs if you get the vehicle to 100% health. However, due to the amount of damage that usually accompanies these abilities and their short duration, this is probably only viable against the British Sniper's Critical Shot. Temporary crits can be removed by the USF Vehicle Crew's Critical Repair. This ability only removes one critical at a time, so be careful using it because you might end up removing the temporary critical instead of the permanent one that you desired. And now we're going to move on to the permanent criticals. Engine damage is probably the most common critical in Company of Heroes 2. The effects are minus 60% max speed and minus 40% rotation rate. For anti-tank grenades, Panzerfaust and the like, the critical is only applied if the vehicle is at or below 75% health after the grenade damage. So here's a quick demonstration. Note the anti-tank grenades with the exception of the sticky satchel do 100 damage each. After one grenade no critical is applied, but with the second one the panther reaches exactly 75% health and receives engine damage. This critical is removed by repairs at 75% health. However, engine damage from mines and other abilities have no health requirement so will happen 100% of the time. They also require repairs back to 100% health before removal. Next up we have heavy engine damage which inflicts a 90% reduction in max speed and a 70% reduction in rotation rate. This is quite a rare critical, applied to vehicles when they are abandoned and by T-34 RAM. It also requires repair to 100% health to remove. So here we have a T-34 with heavy engine damage and then another one that also has engine damage from a mine and an anti-tank grenade. So now we're going to have a race between the two but sped up by 300%. As you can see their speeds are identical demonstrating that these permanent criticals do not stack, only the most severe one is applied. 
So here's a race between two tanks with engine damage, however one is going to be running over a continuous line of light AT mines which should be providing it with a 50% slow. I ran this test many times and kept getting pathing issues, however I would expect the tank running over the light AT mines to lose by a much more considerable margin if the effects were stacking. What I did notice during the race is that after running over this mine, the temporary critical was gone almost instantly. This suggests that reapplying a temporary critical to a vehicle does not actually reset the critical's timer, and it will wear off whenever the original critical was due to expire. The most severe movement critical is immobilized, rendering your vehicle unable to move. This is also quite rare, applied by a very limited amount of abilities, and requires repair back to 100% health to remove. And finally, we have main gun destroyed, which renders the main gun unusable. This is one of the last random criticals remaining in the game. Random criticals used to be a lot more prevalent in earlier versions of Code 2. There is a 10% chance for a vehicle to receive main gun destroyed when it receives damage, leaving it below 25% health. This requires repairs back to 75% health to remove. There is also a second type which can happen to the T-34 and the vehicle it's ramming, and this requires repairs back to 100% health to remove. And now, as a Patreon requested bonus round, we're going to take a look at the different animations when vehicles die, also known as death criticals. First is the standard death which has a 65% chance of happening. Next is our control. This can only trigger if the vehicle is moving and happens 20% of the time. During this period, the vehicle can still shoot and crush infantry, however the player has no control over it. The brew up death animation is longer than the standard one, so it can sometimes be confusing whether or not you got the kill. This death animation is only available to about half the vehicles in the game, mostly from the western front, and happens 20% of the time. And finally we have Abandon, which leaves the vehicle able to be recrewed by either player, or destroyed by additional damage. This happens 5% of the time. Note the number above the vehicle indicates the number of infantry models required to recrew the vehicle. When a vehicle is abandoned, it receives heavy engine damage, severely limiting its mobility. Be careful recruing an abandoned vehicle as USF as it will swallow the whole squad due to that faction's vehicle crew mechanics, potentially leading to a disaster. That's it for this installment guys, this video was a tremendous amount of work, so if you enjoyed it, please consider contributing to my efforts to get to GCS2.